European Union and Indian tariffs goes back to the 1960s when India was among the first countries in the world to establish diplomatic relations with the European economic community. Ties with the European Union since then has grown, where today the European Union is one of India's largest trading partners, but also has split across many sectors. Today, on December 1st, the 28th European Film Festival is being started at New Delhi. We have with us the Ambassador of the European Union to India, Mr. Hervé Delphine. Thank you, sir, for joining us at the print today. Thank you very much. So my first question uh, is with regards to this film festival and the larger cultural ties. Uh, I, I saw a, a short video of yours earlier where you spoke about your love for cinema and how it takes you back, you know, when you were a young boy watching these kind of movies. So just as a diplomat today, what do you expect from, you know, the film festival going forward and how would this help uh, build people to people ties with India? I think first you started by indicating how much the EU-India relations has grown over time and I think it's, it's the, the, the cultural dimension is part of that, uh, of that uh, growing and expanding relationship and I think it's, it's a, a powerful vehicle to bring closer people mm -hmm. to people. Uh, it's also a, um, a way of getting to know each other, understanding respective perspectives and uh, personal histories, but also societal differences, but also the connecting points. So uh, the cinema is a very powerful uh, mean to better understand each other. So that's the first. Uh, the second is indeed uh, culture as a, as a tool of diplomacy and uh, what we call soft diplomacy. I think in, tho in those days, it's a, it's a very important element. When we see increased polarization, uh, ideologies uh, prevailing over, over interest and, 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 uh, and engagement with each other. I think it's important to, to retain those, those, this cultural dimension and see what unites us and what is of, of respective benefit. Right, and uh, as you said, cinema is a powerful tool of soft diplomacy, which has been one of the pillars of the European Union foreign policy. But Given your time in India, or your understanding of EU-Indian ties, what are sort of the challenges that you know one faces from the European Union when it comes with cultural engagement with the country? I mean, first, culture is uh, in the Euro for the European Union is both a, a, res a responsibility for each of these member states. It has its own cultural links. Here we are in the <laughs> Instituto Cervantes, and indeed e Spain has very strong relations, cultural relations with, with India. The same for Germany, France, name it. Any uh, European member state has its own cultural links here with, with India. But I think at the European level, we are trying to project uh, this sense of diversity that you and despite this diversity we are united this is the european motto unity in diversity and i think it's in today's highly polarized world as i said um, you know we we remember our own history our continent almost collapsed into a or fell into apocalypse through two world wars and despite this we rose from the ashes of this and we realized that we had to work together, be together. And I think that is, that is really the background to everything we do in engaging. We are not a, a military superpower. We are not here to invade anyone or have, uh, uh, I would say, a strong foreign policy agenda in terms of uh, uh, being against some, someone or anyone. We are really rising from, from that history and we want to cooperate and engage with we, whichever is interested in. So we are a force, I would say a force for good, and we are also a bridge. And in that respect, we share a lot uh, in common with, with India in trying to be bridge heads between, between uh, uh, global, uh, global actors and partners. Right, and uh, I know that the European Union, for example, in 2012 was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for its successes in bringing the continent together in peace since 1945. But saying that, uh, like you said, working with India, India is a diverse country, you have individual member states also reaching out. But from the view of the European Union, right, how do you see 
ties between India and the Union, whether it's soft power, whether it's culture, you know, how do you see this going forward? Where do you see areas of cooperation here? And, you know, to strengthen and deepen these ties, what are the areas that, you know, you would be looking to deepen ties in this sort of field? I think there is already a lot that is being done. I mean, started, I would say, I education and culture. We, f we see um, uh, Indian students top EU list in terms of access to uh, EU grants, Erasmus Mundus, or uh, exchange programs, so which is already a very uh, tangible and concrete uh, dimension of the exchanges between our two countries. We would like also to, to bring more Europeans to discover and understand uh, the, the, the country, India. I think it, it, I think it would be great for the relationship that it's a, it's a, it's, 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 it goes two ways. So I think in, in culture, well, we are today opening the, the film festival. I mean, uh, you have a very uh, strong film industry, a European too. I think promoting cooperation, uh, joint, joint operations, bringing film directors and producers together around um, uh, projects is also a way. So is the EU can be a facilitator? Uh, we are not putting money as a directly in a film, but we can facilitate those contacts. And this is also what this film festival is about, bringing people together. Uh. Right. And my last question then in, in, the, in this sense and talking about sort of pivoting away to the larger EU India ties, there's been a lot of talk over almost 15, 16 years now uh, to deepen trade ties with India, signing a free trade agreement, which has gone through many phases. Uh, as we know, we've finished, I think, the sixth round of talks uh, since 2022 on the free trade agreement in October. So if you could share with us, you know, what is the status, what is happening with regards to sort of deepening economic trade ties uh, mm -hmm. with regards to the free trade agreement between EU and India? Mm -hmm. uh, first, what we are talking about now, and you refer to the sixth round since 2022, we are talking about what I call FTA 2.0. We are mm -hmm. not talking about the FTA first negotiation that was launched years ago. We are in a completely different environment both economically and geopolitically. So what we are seeing now is the two sides really committed uh, to en and engage into uh, the negotiation, uh, which is a very um, comprehensive one and therefore a very difficult one by its very nature, but there is nothing wrong with that. I think it's, it's, it's an, an, an agreement, I would say very, very consequential for both sides. And I think that is understood and realized by both sides. What we expect is to come uh, to um, a, a, an agreement, and I think the EU is very committed to that. Um, uh, as I said, substance should prevail over timing. Is the quality of what is in FTA at the end of the day that matters. Um, also recognizing that an FTA brings value to both sides. Both sides are winners in an FTA, and all evidence of the FTAs that the EU has signed with partners so it's beneficial to both sides. And I think it's a positive sum game. It's not a zero sum game. And I think both sides should come to a situation where the sense of balance between in the compromise made actually is considered as a positive one and benefits both sides. And I think at this point in time, it were, as you mentioned, you were in the sixth round, um, there is a momentum in the negotiation that should be kept. There are issues to be addressed. I think both sides have to adjust, and I think uh, we're confident that both sides will, will, will come and reach the, an agreement. Don't ask me about the timing. I think it's the negotiators that are in the lead that should uh, appreciate when and how the conditions will be in place for that. Um, I would say that if there is a sense of we need to accelerate, EU will accelerate. If India wants at some point to uh, consult internally, see the different elements, we understand that. But we will be there. We are responsive and we are really engaged. And I think that's the message that comes throughout from, from Brussels. Right, sir. Thank you so much. That's my last question, Ambassador. Thank you so much for joining the print. Do subscribe and tune in for more such analysis and discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much.